Now you can put into place all of these tips, but if you don't use this one tip, the most important tip, then you are not going to get to your goals. And that is Let's just say 2020 has been like freshman year of college, except everyone gained the freshman 15. So today we are going to go over the five best weight loss tips to not only lose it, but to keep it off as well. My name is Nick or exercise for cheat meals where I create anabolic recipes or review other people's anabolic recipes, but I also know the education side of it as well. Now it's impossible to go over everything, but for each one of these tips, I can make an entirely separate video and dive deeper into each one to give you guys more knowledge. So if you would like that, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're ready to lose that stay at home weight that you gained in 2020, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let's get into it. So Nick, Nicholas, exercise for cheat meals, who are you and why can you do this video? Real quickly, I would like to go over that. Not only since a very young age have I been into sports and fitness, but when I went to school, I went for exercise science, graduated in exercise physiology, and I have been skinny, skinny fat, muscular, skinny and muscular, obese. I have had the full range of weights. And I finally, in the last couple of years, have learned how to lose the weight and to keep it off. These tips will be presented to you in no order besides number one. So the first tip is find what you like. Too many people start off their New Year's resolutions by going on the treadmill for 30 minutes or lifting weights and especially ego lifting and thinking that that's the only way to get physical activity in so that they can lose weight and get shredded. And guess what? I used to be one of those people, but I hated running on the treadmill. Why would I do that? If you do something for 16 weeks and stop, and then you start eating the same way that you did before and you stop training and burning those calories, you're just going to gain the weight back. If you like sports, there's sports that you can do. It's kind of hard right now, but sports is an option. Literally as simple as going on a walk. Along with that is having a pet. Pets need to go for walks. You can play with your pet. Anything you do is burning calories. And lastly, there's home workouts. You can go on YouTube, look up an ab workout, look up a legs workout, look up a calisthenic workout, workouts with weights, workouts without weights. You have so many options and you can pick whatever you want. Yoga, literally as I'm sitting here talking, I keep thinking of things. When I get out of a 10 hour day or I edit it all day long on my off day, I cannot wait to go to the gym. I'm excited to go to the gym. That should be you on whatever you do, whether you're going to your living room to do yoga or you're gonna go to the gym and bench press for 20 sets, whatever. Now the second tip is eat what you like. It kind of relates to the first tip, but you can still eat all the foods that you love while on a diet. Between Greg, Remington, Will, Mina, Iron Musket, Ethan, me, the list goes on and on and on. There are so many anabolic recipes that are comparable to the real thing that are low calorie, that are going to fill you up or satisfy your need for a sweet tooth, ice cream, cookies, donuts, double down Remington just came out with today. Like, Literally anything that you want, you can make on the anabolic diet and eat it. If you love chicken, broccoli, and rice and can eat it every day for the rest of your life, then do it. That's no problem. But 98% of people can't do it. So you have to eat what you like so that you can keep doing it forever, as I'm going to keep mentioning throughout this video. And a quick point, it doesn't have to be the anabolic diet. If you love keto, if you love low carb, if you love any of, if you're vegan, if you love any of a certain diet and you can stick to it, as I was saying, then do it. It doesn't have to be the anabolic diet that you go on. The third tip is to plan. There is so much to unravel in this and I'm going to try and put planning and tracking on the same tip 
but I'll try to make this as sweet and concise as possible. First, you gotta plan your workouts. How many days a week are you gonna work out? I don't care if you work out one day a week or you work out seven days a week, but you have to figure that out. And on which days will you work out? How long will you work out for? An hour, half an hour, how much time do you have? If you have kids, you might not have as much time. You can only do half an hour. Still, something is better than nothing and you will burn calories and be losing weight as long as you're in a caloric deficit. And let's say that you are busy that day and you need to have a backup plan. Well, we can also plan to have that backup plan. So the other day I was running short on time and was trying to get my snickerdoodle video up. So what I did instead of going to the gym was I did a 40 minute cardio session of insanity in my living room. All I had to do, put my shorts on, put my shirt on, get my water and step into the living room. And I was done in legitimately 45 minutes, start to finish. If I had went to the gym with changing, driving, parking, et cetera, it would have been two hours plus. Have a backup plan so you just don't say, uh, I don't have time and you don't do it that day because that leads into other behaviors such as eating the wrong things that will get you off track and won't help you with your progress whatsoever. And of course, everyone has events. It might seem silly, but when you eat out, bring something with you unless you're okay with just ordering the salad on the menu or whatever you can calculate the calories in your head because then you know exactly what you're putting in your body. You know how many calories you're eating, how much protein you're getting in that meal, and you just know that you are under your calories. Your friends might make fun of you. They might say, oh, I can't believe you brought a meal with you. What are you doing? We're eating out. It's funny because it's a catch-22. If you don't go and eat with your friends, they're like, oh, why didn't you come? You should have came. I don't care if you just showed up but then you do come and you bring your meal with you so you can stay on track and they're like, oh, why'd you bring your meal? That's stupid, blah, blah, blah. You should have just got something here. Oh, you could cheat a little bit. It's no big deal. Trust me when I say in 12 weeks, when you lose 20, 25, whatever amount of pounds or gain whatever amount of muscle that you wanna gain, they're going to be then asking you, oh my God, what did you do to lose the weight? Oh my God. What did you do to gain that muscle? And then they're gonna understand why you do the things that you did and hopefully follow your lead at that point as well. Now, along with planning your workouts and which workouts you'll do on which days, you also have to be tracking to know that you're progressing. And with the bodybuilding app, you can actually put as many workouts in as you would like and it doesn't charge you. And let's just go through it so I can show you. So go to the bodybuilding app. As you can see, I've been using this for a long time. 1400 workouts recorded, but you just go to track a workout, my workout templates, and you could go to my workout templates, which is what I would normally do. Since I did this in school, I always make my own programs and write up my own workouts. And I like to vary it up because yeah, after 12 or 16 weeks, I would like to do a couple different workouts that are swapped out. So then I go and create a new workout. For example, pull 12. As you can see, I can go here and I can go to track now. When I go to track now, it takes me right to the first set and you could add warm up sets, whatever. You could say that it's a warm up set. You can put your target reps in there and then you can also put your weight if you put like a weighted pull up. But since I don't have that, I would put in my amount and then it even gives you the rest time between sets. So if you don't have like an Apple watch or something like that, you could watch how long you're resting in between each set. Now let's go to one that's weighted. I do so many sets and reps every week and so many different weights. I'm not gonna remember the week before. If you're one of those people that thinks that they remember everything the week before, I'm sorry, you're not the one. So what I do is I go to previous stats and boom, I have 105 for 10 reps, 105 for 10 reps. I'm gonna try 105 for 11 or I'm gonna try 110 for 10. And that's how you know that you're progressing. And it works with pretty much everything. You could even make supersetted workouts. So, all right, I do my face pull for whatever reps, and then I would do a burnout with a band. And so I would do a band burnout, and I would put how many reps I got before I had to stop. You have to plan for your workout because then you're not gonna know if you're improving. If you don't know if you're improving, the motivation isn't there. But if you see, oh man, I just went up five pounds last week, let's try to go up five more pounds, and then you get it, that's going to keep you going. 
Now, as far as my weight, the other thing that I do is I literally have a notebook where I keep all my weights. If you don't do this, it doesn't make sense to me. Why, Nick? To me, it's like going to the gym and not recording your weights. How do you know you're improving? Yes, your shirts can fit better. Yes, you can feel better and you will feel better, but if your main goal is weight loss and you don't know if you're losing weight, it doesn't keep the motivation as high. It just doesn't. You see that you lost an average of a pound and a half from the week before, you really lost a pound and a half or damn near that of fat and maybe some muscle, maybe some water, but you actually lost that pound and a half. If you went out and drank alcohol the night before, you can lose literally eight pounds because you're dehydrated and you step on the scale and you think you lost eight pounds, but you're just dehydrated because if you weigh yourself the next day, you're going to weigh about the same that you did the day before that. So you see how these can really get played with? You need to log your weight. To me, it's very important. You can choose not to, but I'm trying to give you the best ways and the most things that you can do to stay on track. The last thing, which will take a little bit of time to start, is my fitness pal or whatever logging application that you want to use to track your calories. Again, if you don't know how many calories you're eating and you come to me and you say you're not losing weight, I have to know what you're eating. So either you have to check the calories or you have to literally tell me what you ate and I have to try to guesstimate it. Let's take the guesswork out of it and track your calories. It's as simple as going to breakfast, going to whatever. Sausage garlic bread sauce. I know how many calories is in it. I have all the ingredients already stored and pressing check. Takes two seconds. So I wanna do the actual garlic bread part. So I go to it, I press check. Boom, I have my breakfast in there. Two seconds. The MyFitnessPal is going to take you a little bit of time to get used to, but for me, it's a breeze. I can log everything that I eat in a day in under two minutes. The fourth tip I have for you. Be realistic about your goals. Too many people get into the four weeks to abs, eight weeks to shred, whatever. If they have to lose 50 pounds, that is literally impossible. You can't do it. And if you do do it, you legitimately starved yourself, you lost all your muscle and you will have a lot of loose skin. Like it's just not healthy and you're most likely going to rebound and gain that weight back. That is just not the way to do it. So be realistic about your goals. If you have an eight week plan, plan to lose about 0.5 to 1% of your body fat every week. That's what's been shown to help preserve muscle and also be healthy and stop growing from punching you in the face as you slowly lose the weight and you feel good throughout the process. The first time you diet, you're probably not gonna be that great at it. The second time you diet, you're gonna get better, leaps and bounds better. The third time you diet, you probably pretty much got it down. There's so many things that you can learn and you can never learn them in three months, in four months, in five months, in a year, in two years. I am constantly learning and there's no way to pick it all up the first go around. So what exactly is realistic, Nick? Like I said, 1% of your body weight every week, unless you're in like the 300 pound range, you could lose weight a little bit faster, but for me, I'm about 200 pounds. I'm going to have a goal to lose a pound to two pounds per week and do a 12 to 16 week program and try to get to my goal weight within those 16 weeks. Now, I'm also going to have long-term and short-term goals. My long-term goal is to get to 185 pounds, but I'm going to have little short-term goals in between. So if I'm doing a 12 week program every month, I want to make sure that I lose X amount of pounds. And inside of that, I am losing X amount of pounds every week. There's so many things that you can do as short term goals. So when you get to that long term goal, you'll actually accomplish it because you are making short term goals instead of, oh man, that's 16 weeks away. That's 12 weeks away. I don't know if I could do that with every little tiny short term goal. It'll add up and those 16 weeks will go by pretty damn quickly. Now you can put into place all of these tips, but if you don't use this one tip, the most important tip, then you are not going to get to your goals. And that is being in a caloric deficit. There's no other way to put it. That is burning more calories than you're eating. That's it. 
There's multiple ways you can do it, whether it's cardio, whether it's weightlifting, you burn calories just by sitting and fidgeting, you burn calories just by living. However, at the end of the day, you have to be burning more calories than you're putting into your body to lose weight. It's as simple as that. The only way to do this is to see where you're at by going back to my other tips and tracking your weight. If you track your weight and you took 800 calories away and you lost four pounds and you only want to lose a pound and a half a week, you'd be like, whoa, Nick, you're like, that's too much. Then you adjust for the next week and add calories back in. One week isn't going to kill you. I'd rather have you lose four pounds the first week than not lose any weight and then be frustrated and be like, oh, I have to cut more calories. This is a major key that I did not say earlier. I don't care how you feel about your body. If you hate what you look like right now, take that initial progress picture. People always, everyone that I've talked to, friends, clients, anybody that I've worked with, get so frustrated because after five weeks, four weeks, they've lost 10 pounds, they've lost 12 pounds, and they take a picture and they're like, man, I wish I had a before picture. Pretty soon I'm gonna be opening my online coaching business, doing phone consults, doing live one-on-one -on -one training sessions. For now, if you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section, DM me, I will try to get back to you. I might not be able to be as detailed as I would like to be, but I really try to get to everybody. So I have to go quickly yet efficiently and still try to answer your question the best that I can. If you wanna see more educational videos like this, let me know in the comment section below we are going to keep pumping out the recipes in the next few videos so stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell and until next time i will see you in that next one do see